Smells like teen spirit. That was easy. You're easy. Hi guys, it's your favorite garage dweller, Sarah, here with another video. <laughs> Today's video is going to be something a little bit special and different. I'm going to be working on all three of my project cars in this video, the MR2, the Forrester Gump, and the TT, because I have little things I need to do all of them. Plus I got a side project going on in my garage right now that I'm going to be uh, dealing with. Hashtag construction. <laughs> so uh, also the main purpose of today's video is I want to kind of give some knowledge back to you guys of things that I learned while serving the military that have helped me become a better mechanic. So maybe you can apply these techniques and tips to your own lives that might help you guys out. Before I get started with this video, this is a side project I'm still working on. Last night, my roommate Sarah and I lifted this bad chicken up onto the wall and bolted it in. It's pretty much good to go now. I have the thing all bolted into the studs in the wall. And I figured this was a great way to start out this video because I don't really know anything when it comes to construction type stuff. Mechanics is one thing, but this stuff I'm horrible at. And that's what I love about social media is I was able to reach out to you guys through Instagram to make sure I was doing this correctly. So thanks. the video out with this because this is something I've been lacking in my garage for the longest time. This is my maintenance board. So I have all the cars on here, Mr. Dose, Forrester Gump, and Teeter Tot, and I jotted down items that I need to address on each car. Now there's probably a little bit more, but these are the main pressing issues that I need to take care of on these project cars. So yeah, we're starting off the video with this because it's a basic visual management tool that I learned and it helped me tremendously. So now that that's up, let's start knocking some things off the board. Hello, Gump. First up, you guys have been asking for Forrest or Gump content for a while, so what I have right here is a new set of HID bulbs, they're uh, Morimoto's, that's exactly what is in here right now, except these are like four years old and they're starting to flicker. So this leads me to my next tip, and that's these. You guys see me wear these gloves all the time in my videos when working on cars, and I don't typically wear the cloth mechanic gloves because these allow you to retain your dexterity. The style glove does provide a little bit more protection when it comes to cuts and scrapes, but the one thing that is a massive downside is when you have your hand in a confined space, especially around moving parts, and you need to pull it out quickly, sometimes these gloves will roll and cause your hand to get caught in that area, which could lead to significant injuries versus a scrape or a cut. And in this situation where the oils in your fingers can damage the bulb itself if you accidentally touch it, having these gloves on here allows me to touch the bulb. And if I had the cloth ones on there, I could probably still do the same thing, but these ones make it easier. Just take my word for it, okay? Old? New. Let's give these things a test. Off, on, off, on. The issue I was having before with the old ones is when I turn on my headlights, sometimes just one would turn on or the other, or sometimes neither, and I had to keep turning them on and off to give them both come on. But yeah, looks good. Morning peeps next morning check that out last night I got a little crazy and uh, I cleaned up that corner and I put the bottom seat cushion to the TT's rear seat on that tire rack and I made a little folding couch anyway speaking of the TT 
I'm bringing him the garage. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the TT. question I get asked in the comments section is how do I stay so clean when I'm working on cars? And the answer to that is what you just saw. I wash them before I work on them. The main reason though why I wash stuff before I work on it not just because I don't want to get dirty myself, but if I'm working on something specifically like an engine, or if you take it apart and the vehicle is filthy, and then you introduce that filth into the component you just took apart, well then you run the risk of damaging it. So it just makes sense to me to wash things before you work on them. Okay, F off. I just had to go inside my house. There's a swarm of bees that just came in my garage all of a sudden. I don't know why. I hope they're not killer. Sad. I love bees. If you guys didn't see that video where I just installed the dual core radiator on the TT, there's a link up above. But now I need to go ahead and leak test the coolant system and see if I have any new leaks. When I installed the radiator, the lower fitting on the radiator where it has a drain valve looked like it might leak. So I do have a new one of those, but I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize the system and see if it leaks. I do know the coolant line going to the turbo leaks, but to do that, I have to tear apart the back half of the engine. like it's coming up to temp. The other issue I'm checking for right now is I want to make sure my cooling fans turn on when they're supposed to. I unplugged the AC pressure sensor to see if that is what's causing my fans to come on and off wholesale erratically. So my cooling fan should kick on here any minute. Looks like the thermostat just opened up, so that's good. No leaks. <laughs> So just letting it sit here and idle in the driveway, it wouldn't get hot enough for the cooling fans to come on. So I'm gonna button everything up and then take it for a road test so I can put a load on it and possibly get a little bit of heat soak under the hood and see if the cooling fans come on. Oh yeah, that's gonna suck. That's gonna suck hard. How, how do I get you? This thing smells like coolant. Smells like teen spirit. This is not my best look. I didn't really care because I gotta wash my hair tonight. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. Anyway, my next tip is hardware. Now, whenever I remove a component on a car, I always try to put the hardware back in the hole in which it came from. So that way I don't end up with a million nuts and bolts scattered about when I'm done working on something, especially if you're not gonna be able to come back to it until a couple days later. You can also use those little magnetic pans, but I find it works best if possible to just put the bolts back in the area where they go. So that way you know for sure where the bolts go when you go to reinstall stuff. Where are you? There's a bee on my leg. No, oh, he's flying around. Oh, hello bee. Hello bee. Anyway, all right, everything's buttoned back up on the car. Uh, now I'm going to take it for a drive and see if this thing comes up to temp without any issues. I'm gonna drive without the front bumper on it. Looks a little bit uh, kartoffle tot tea. That didn't work like I thought it would. So far, so good. It's a little low on coolant, so I gotta add some coolant, but check it out. That's awesome, the cooling fans are running on low speed like they should, and they just cycled off. Good, so the cooling fan issue is solved. It has to do with my air conditioning system. I disconnected the AC pressure sensor, and I think it's because there's no charge on the system, and the AC compressor leaks on this thing too, so. Awesome. I can't believe it's only March and it's almost 80 degrees in my garage already. 
this, this is gonna be a crazy summer. Anyway, uh, as you see, I got the two front tires for the MR2. I got Federal 595 RSRRs. I've heard good things, so I bought them to see how they do. Uh, they're fairly cheap, so that's good. And they're uh, rated at 200. I heard they actually wear more like a 140. So they're gonna be a pretty aggressive, sticky tire. We'll see how they do. So uh, instead of doing work on the MR2, because it's already seven o'clock at night, I'm gonna do a mail time, because I have a ton of mail that you guys have sent me piled up. So we're gonna knock that out. I'm kind of excited too. I always like seeing what you guys send. So this first one is from Amazon. Thank you, Amazon. It doesn't say who it's from, but they sent me a magnetic base style indicator. I've never actually used one of these before. It's like a robot arm. This is really awesome. I'll have to find an application where I can use this. Came with a gauge. Neat. This is cool. Whoever sent this, thank you. So what the f Did I just like eat my knife? Where the hell did my knife go? I think this one is for a small Sarah. It's a little Sarah on it. So I cannot open this. So how I'm always slicing my arms up working on cars and I don't want to look like a lot lizard. Now I can look like I'm emo. Because <laughs> then I have these arm sleeve protectors. I think I should like go run around in a field now and have a German Shepherd try to bite my arm. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Whoever sent this, this is smart. Thanks. Next package is from Dan. Dan the man. Oh geez. Magnificent pandas. This is so fitting for this video. PPE, personal protective equipment. <laughs> it's a face shield. Safety glasses, are you trying to tell me something? Oh cool. It has a long shaft. I like that. A bunch of cutoff wheels. A small angle grinder. Thank you, Dan. This, this is kind of a hint that my Dremel just hasn't been cutting it. Ha. <laughs> You see what I did there? I'm so punny. Where'd I put my knife? Next package is from Dave. Thank you for the heat gun. That was a subtle hint because I'm always using either a lighter or an old hair dryer when I need a heat gun. I had a heat gun, it just, it broke and I just haven't bought another one. So now I got another one, so thank you. Next one is from Steven. Oh, Steven sent a package for small Sarah, but I cannot open it on camera because it is for small Sarah. Next package. This is really ironic that this stuff is popping up in mail time. Uh, another tip that I learned from the military, magnetic trays. A lot of this stuff is common sense to the average mechanic, but I don't know, I just thought this was a cute idea for a video. Just some random things that help me and I, you guys always help me out in the comments section with things when I ask questions. So I'm trying to like somehow give back to you guys. I don't know, this is all that counts, right? Another one, <laughs> mirror, magnet, and a grabber. Awesome, thank you so much. That was easy. You're easy, I don't get it. Look, somebody sent me a crop top welding garment. It's cute. I know it's not actually a crop top because that wouldn't make any sense. You just burn your stomach, but it looks like a crop top. Thank you. Ooh, this one is thick. Thank you, Jeff. And he also sent a little wooden keychain. And this is so cool. So Jeff made this picture frame of Mr. Dose that plugs in and it, it's backlit. Oh man, this is going up on the wall. This is so awesome. I love the font that you used on here. Thank you so much, this is so creative. I really like this. Jeff sent this little burnt wood. It's a little burnt wood plaque. Thank you so much, Jeff, this is awesome. I'm gonna make sure I hang this up in a good spot on the wall. So he wrote in the letter that he hopes I encourage more people, especially young girls, to tackle problems on their own, like these project cars. And that is one of my biggest things with this YouTube channel is I wanna encourage more girls to get into cars and like kind of pass the torch off. So whenever I see like new 
YouTubers starting up that are women in the automotive industry, it makes me happy because I would like to see that, like lots of other car channels that are like mine or there's Amelia Hartford or Woman Driven or my friend Macbeth or um, who was the new one that I just found recently, Queen BRZ. Like I like seeing all these girl based car YouTube channels popping up and it's awesome because cars should be something that is enjoyed by everyone. Next package is from Justin. Justin sends. Oh my God, this is awesome. That is so cool. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. I'm gonna hang this up on the wall. They got a little tweak in the mail, a tiny bit, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Oh, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup, Bryce. This is awesome. I don't have one from France yet. <laughs> That's cute. This just seems like something I would have on a license plate. Giddy up. <laughs> this is so cute. Look, it's socks. One says clutch and the other one says gas. And there's two of them. These are adorable. Thank you. Anyway, I hope this video was in some way useful to you guys. I just wanted to share a little bit of tips because I'm always asking you guys in the comment section for help on these project cars and I just wanted to somehow try to give some tips back of things that I do, common practices that might help you. Most of them are common sense for the most part, but maybe there's some that you guys didn't know. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.